I do apologize that this review didn't come out sooner. I did write a lot of it a few months ago. However, when Sora was released for Smash Brothers, I kind of went out, bought Smash, ended up playing it so much that I completely forgot to do this review. In the meantime, what happened to Nickelodeon All-Star Brawls is that it, quite frankly, dropped off the face of the earth, only to now have it return thanks to Black Friday deals. And it doesn't surprise me that the Black Friday deals brought this game back. A lot of the deals were priced where this game should have been to start with, between $20 to $30. This game is definitely not worth $50, but it's not at the fault of the developers, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Anyways, I get that people want to contender a second alternative to Smash Brothers, because they don't want to deal with Nintendo and their overprotectiveness when it comes to copyright. And Nickelodeon's All-Star Brawl 2 might be that game, but certainly not the original one here. Don't get me wrong, Nickelodeon's All-Star Brawls both has the heart and the gameplay in the right place, but they're missing one major component that keeps it from being as enjoyable as Smash, and I don't blame their developers. I blame Viacom for being too cheap with both the funding and with their IP. Yeah, Nick All-Star Brawl gameplay is actually kind of fun, but it's lacking polish in a lot of the areas in its presentation. And presentation in a game like this does matter. So I'll start talking about that, and I'll talk about the gameplay too. So what do I mean by presentation? Well, I don't mean story. Most Smash games don't have any type of story. I don't really need to have some narrative that connects why Leonardo would want to fight Aang here or anything like that. I'm talking about things like graphics, musics, and the way the characters are represented. It's done terribly here. The reason why Smash is so enjoyable and the reason why Sakurai has probably put his health in severe danger a lot is just the amount of polish in its presentation. Every character gets several tracks from their game. Extra care is made so the stage and the backgrounds look like they come from the world, the game they represent. Even if it's a reused stage, you still feel like the people putting it together wanted to feel both like the game as much as possible and that it fits into Smash Brothers. You don't get that here with Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. Let's talk about the music first. Again, Bros tries to remix music to fit the game or put in the original soundtrack. Here, none of that. You have SpongeBob SquarePants here, but do you have any music that sounds like it might mention a pineapple under the sea? No? Okay, classic Ninja Turtle. So any remixes of the classic 80s theme song? Nope. Although to be fair, some of the music in the alley backdrop does sound reminiscent of some of the background music in the show, but nothing that's super memorable or really fits in with this game. How about voice acting? I know some voice actors are hard to get, like the voice of April O'Neil here, whose actress doesn't do a lot of acting. Her only big role for the most part has been well, April O'Neil off the 80s cartoon, so she could probably hard to get into the studio. Not to mention Nigel Thornberry's voice actor was Tim Curry, who isn't in the best of health nowadays thanks to a stroke. But you know what? James Arnold Taylor does a pretty good Tim Curry impersonation. He could fill in the role. You could also maybe throw Mae Whitman into the April O'Neil role as she did April in the 2012 Ninja Turtles. Yes, it would be different, but you could still get a voice for the character, so therefore, problem solved. The rest of them should be easy to fill as well. Instead, we get absolutely no voice acting. Just some stupid text quotes that make no sense when taken out of context. Yeah, the whole doing nothing is easy, but forgiveness is hard is a really great line from Avatar The Last Airbender, but if you haven't watched Avatar The Last Airbender, people are going to say, what the hell does that mean? And won't get it. It's perfect for the scene it's in. It's not good for just some random quote in front of a video game. 
then throw in there's no ouch, oofs, laughs, or taunt, it makes the game feel very bare bones audio wise. You know how much better this game would be if you heard Ren and Stimpy yell, you idiot, when you knock them out of the ring? Or if Spongebob just did a silly retarded laugh whenever he got knocked out? It would be 10 times better. Having no voice acting in 2021 is inexcusable. But unfortunately, it's common in a lot of Nickelodeon games. Here is Nickelodeon Racer. It's not Mario Kart, but it's a fun kart racer. And the game has the gall in the middle of the race to just flash some little quotes in the corner. You know what would be better than having a little Donatello face on the side shouting something? If you actually took a clip of Rob Paulson saying those lines. Or even better, get them into the studio to redo the lines for the cart racer. This is simple presentation in a modern day video game, Viacom. It's not hard to figure out. There's been voice acting in games from 30 years ago. Viacom, whoever's saying this is good enough for our video games needs to step down now because that's not good. They're failing you. They need to do better work because this right here, it sucks. It really makes a great game sucky. That's the best way I can describe it. Now let's talk about this game's graphics. Now again, I don't blame the developers. I think they tried. I blame Viacom, the owners of Nickelodeon, for this. With what little it looks like they gave the developers, the developers do show they care about the characters enough. Things like Yang's taunt, which shows him doing the little air ball he did to try to impress girls, and his winning animation show they do watch and put research into the show and wanted to be faithful to the characters. But whatever reason, it looks like this belongs on the Xbox Live Arcade. Remember that? Now, don't get me wrong, it's a good-looking Xbox Live Arcade game, but it's an XBLA game nonetheless. The graphics lack some color and details. They have this plastic look to them. The backgrounds are okay, but they're not super detailed here. Occasionally, I see characters run through them, but again, they're not as lively as what this game's main competition will be Super Smash Brothers. Oh, and another thing, uh, Nick and Viacom, Smash makes sure that there are plenty of color palettes available for a character. And sometimes they're willing to change the model completely to make sure that that character gets a second look, like Dragon Quest heroes. Nick here, you only get one model per character. If it's the same character, it's chosen twice, the only thing that can tell them apart is the player's pointer on top of them. I guess they're dropping in other costumes soon as free DLC, but at least simple color changes should have been there day one. What were they thinking? It's such a shame because despite all of my complaining about the presentation, the core gameplay is pretty damn solid. It knows what makes Smash fun and doesn't change that but add some unique spin so that the game is different enough and isn't just a clone of Smash. In the end, it's actually a somewhat fun experience. Let's actually talk about the gameplay now. So, what are the basics of the gameplay? Well, it's kind of like Smash, and if you haven't played Smash, well, click on the card to see my review for more details. Smash, although a fighter, takes more cue from action platformers than fighters like Street Fighter. Your goal isn't to knock out the other fighter, but rather to make them go out of the ring. The more damage a fighter has, the more they are sent flying. A big hit on a fighter with around 0% damage, they're not going to go too far. A light tap on someone who's at 200% damage will send them flying a good ways, and a solid heavy strike will probably send them out of the ring. So what does Nickelodeon add to the formula? Well, first two big things. There is now a light and heavy attack for your characters rather than one attack button, making it quite a bit easier if you want to put a smackdown on a character 
than trying to time it right with the directional button and one attack button like you do on Smash to do your Smash attacks. The other thing they did well is there's now a strafe button so you can move back and forth while looking at your opponent. It's a really great feature. Fights themselves are actually super smooth and if you can get four people together it's absolute chaos and it's really kind of fun. The online battles that I participated were a little slow on the Switch. Supposedly they're doing something different with the netcode to make it faster, but I did see some slowdown with my online gameplay when it comes to the Switch, just to let you know. The only gameplay flaw I believe I can blame the game developers for might be the fact that single player has a really broken AI. If you did see some called me Johnny's review on this, he talked about encountering this a few times. I did too, but my recording device wasn't set up, darn it. But things like the AI characters just kind of going on lunch in the middle of the fight did happen. They just stand there, you pulverize them until they die. But I have plenty of examples of the AI being suicidal. Oh, poor Powdered Toast Man. He found out just how big a creep his creator actually was and decided to end it all. Complete. It doesn't surprise me that this game was a blip until Black Friday when retailers lowered the price down to below $20, what it should have been to begin with. The sad thing is, is this was released say seven or eight years ago back when Xbox Live Arcade was a thing. I could see it easily winning a reward like an Xbox Live Summer of Arcade Best Game Rewards because it does have some quality in its gameplay. And the best thing about those games is most of them came out between 10 to $20 with a few on the high end costing 30 it would have been a perfect place and they could have set a perfect price for this game. But at $50, going only a little lower below what a full retail claim costs, with no voice acting, only so-so graphics and backgrounds, and no extra mode, and just overall lacking the type of polish to make this feel like a cohesive experience or to bring back childhood nostalgia, I'm really going to have to say, give this game a hard pass until it hits the $20 price point, which is where it should have been in the first place. And if you do own a Switch, it's well worth that extra $10 to go out and buy Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It has more modes, more characters, more gameplay, more polish. It's just overall better, with the exception of maybe some of the online when they get the online for this up and running. In the meantime, Viacom, I'm going to say this to you. If you're going to be releasing these crossover games, you need to get your crap together because both your old and young fans deserve better than this presentation. Voice acting in 2021 is no longer optional for a $50 game. Ugh. Anyways, this is Tommy the Game Master signing out. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. Hope to see you guys soon. Ready? Three, two, one, go!